How are you today? Doing well, thanks. How are you? Not too bad for 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 where we're at these days. <laughs> man, oh man, talk about a circus. Right. Uh, so that's an appropriate lead in. So I mean, the first episode of the season. So you directed the first two episodes, and the first episode. I mean, I just love what you guys got into with this this script. I love that it's it's so playful and fun that it, it does poke poke back at that era of, of silent film. Uh, what was that like to make? Well, aside from uh, having to launch into uh, full blown production, uh, we were, you know, being first out the gate uh, in many respects uh, during the pandemic and, and having to employ all those protocols that, that was a challenge, but um, it was a unique opportunity uh, uh, creatively because as, as a director, I'm, I'm having to sort of, you know, tell one of these murder uh, mystery stories, but also incorporate, you know, the, the birth of transitioning from vaudeville to film and, and how important that was in terms of entertainment history. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to nail it. I wanted to do a good job, but, um, you know, there were still some constraints with, uh, with all the protocols. So it was a challenge. Well, and the fact that you recreated the Buster Keaton moment I mean, so was it obviously didn't look quite as dangerous as the way Buster Keaton did it, but it, it still looked dangerous. What what was that moment like? <laughs> yeah, the, the the house facade falling. Yeah, the way he did it was uh, was very real and very dangerous. Uh, you know, <laughs> um, as of were a lot of the stunts that he pulled and a lot of the things that he did. Um, you know, it was a different time. They 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 had to do it <laughs> in order to uh, to be able to impart it. They didn't have the luxury of effects. Although, you know, you can use a lot of their ideas from back then. They still work really well today. Uh, diminishing perspectives and a lot of different things that they they did. Um, for us, we had to do it in a couple of parts because it was really not a big deal, and I probably could have been hurt but just the fact that there was any chance you know nowadays insurance just will not let us do stuff like that so we had to do it in a, a, a three-stage uh, 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 manner with uh, with uh, digital stitching uh, so it had oh, to really be, yeah it, it had to be once over my head once halfway and then once down and one blank actually so those are kind of the three components that had to be stitched together i had hoped that there would be an old lady in a tub once uh once it fell down but i had to settle for a couple of dancing girls uh, uh changing instead well that that was well done and i mean i didn't even realize that it was digital so i did wonder you know like that it's a, even the way even with the size of the wall it was still fairly risky looking so it's it's reassuring to know you weren't actually in any danger <laughs> Yeah, not at all. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, I felt a lot more comfortable doing it this way, especially since I had so many things swirling around in my mind. You know, if you're not able to be 100% focused in those types of situations, it's probably best, to, you know, hedge your bets. So what's, what's coming this season? What are some of your favorite things that you can actually talk about? Uh, we've got some uh, – we've got our great, great uh, – bad guy in Colin Mockery who will be returning and uh, I'm super happy to be able to talk about that because he's just such a wonderful guy and, uh, and a wonderful friend. Um, we have uh, uh, also our, uh, our wonderfully weird and, uh, and wacky neighbor coming back. Um, we also have uh, not as many historical characters this year Although, you know, we packed three uh, pretty good ones into the first episode. But um, the main thing is we, we get to really expand on each of our characters more. Uh, because of the nature of the season and trying to pare down sort of some of the scope of it, we're, um, we're basically encouraged to delve a little bit more into their own personal history. So, so, so we come up with some things that are a little bit, uh, a little deeper than uh, they have been in previous years. And, and, and I think the fans will be really happy for that, really rounding out some of our characters. Well, I even found that the second episode, 
getting into you know the the kind of the younger son storyline there and and could he be in danger what's he doing i i really liked how deep that went because yeah again that felt certainly very very deep for usually what what murdoch is about uh is there more of that kind of is that kind of what you mean in terms of digging into characters Absolutely. So, so finding out last year, we found out a lot more about Brackenreed's past. He, he turns out he has a child um, that is not from his current family, and 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 that's a multiracial story, which I think was fantastic. Um, and then, uh, you know, we we sort of backtrack a little bit and find out where his actual son, or I should say, his his other uh, uh, son is uh what he's up to and uh and that makes for a pretty interesting story uh, and that's coming up uh, for us um monday night uh, i directed that one as well and uh, we have a wonderful young man playing that part and and i think you know this is kind of what life's like sometimes it's not always going that well uh on every side uh, uh sometimes there are challenges especially as, as as a parent sometimes you know in spite of your best efforts you still have somebody whose journey is predestined and then it's beyond you. And, and so, you know, we, we look at that and we look at sort of the tension between the fact that he has, you know, this daughter he's bringing into his life and this son who's somewhat reluctant to be in his life. And so it's, um, it's an interesting piece of drama to work with. It was wonderful. I, the episode is fantastic. So who are some of the characters that we're going to get deeper with this season then is it everyone or is it specifics well pretty much everyone's going to have to um to dig deeper this year we we, we have um we're introducing a relationship for uh ms hart um right off the bat that relationship gets uh, intensified and then it starts to take some strange turns and then we're not sure if she's entertaining disaster or if she's disaster and, <laughs> and so um that that will develop through the season um detective watts has some very deep soul searching to do and some some interesting uh um questions he has to ask himself about him his his character his self his career also so he's gonna have to you know uh, uh deal with that uh we have also um dr ogden left you know season 13 with some questions about you know how and i don't know how helene words it exactly but i thought she she put she summed it up quite well where you know this is life sometimes you get distracted there's an infatuation and what do you do and this that's realistic and and so i thought she had a very interesting take on that and it certainly created a really juicy dynamic for for she and murdoch and then you know we pick up season 14 where they've decided very much to put that behind them. And that leaves them wide open for some pretty tricky stuff at the very end, which uh, all I'll say is that, you know, a big part of Murdoch's past comes back to, um, to be reckoned with, and that's going to affect every character in our story. Wow. Um, so, so that's it. Yeah, you know what? This season has just been, it's much more condensed and concentrated, but it really has, I've said this a few times now already this month, but I, I really think this is our best season yet because it, it's really had all hands on deck in a much more condensed package. And, uh, you know, not a minute is wasted. There's, it's, it's going in every direction and, and really entertaining. Does it take sometimes like external forces like this to to force shows to be creative and maybe that sometimes pushes your hand in ways that that makes episodes I guess different? Well, that's certainly the way it is with showbiz, right? You know, uh, uh, there, there's always been external forces in every aspect that that you know end up making genius moments. Uh, uh, you, you know. Uh, Oh gosh, um, I'm blanking. I, I'm not sure if it's Life of Brian or or which one it is, where they had no money for horses, and you know that will live in infamy with the coconuts. You know, it's <laughs> you couldn't have made A that holy grail. way, and it wouldn't have been as funny. So uh, 
you know, there, there's, you know, the story of the mechanical shark and Jaws and how they had to do it with, with music and tension and that ushered in a new genre of film. So it's, it's uh, you know, it is what it is and, and, and you got to embrace it at the time because you just never know when you're flirting with genius. Well, and I, I mean, I have to say at this point, I've said it before to you in other interviews, but like, congratulations again, because it is remarkable to see the show, a show that lasts this long is so widely well received, is so loved, and you guys are, are reinventing, you know, storylines and plots and characters in a way that doesn't actually disrupt what the show is. And that's, that's a difficult thing. Uh, you know, do you feel some accomplishment that you're like, you're doing stuff that most other shows never get the chance to do? Well, yeah, the, the style of show affords us the ability to, to, to sort of, you know, uh, um, go toward the little bit funny, zany side, and, and then sometimes really delve into some deeper, you know, very real uh, uh, social dilemmas. And, and you know, we, we can talk about history we can you know do it with tongue firmly in cheek um because we don't take ourselves too seriously i think that's sort of the the magic of the show and so it's a real luxury to be able to sort of play that line and 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 you know find that balance just going back and forth we've had some people complain about some of our more light light-hearted or or more sort of off the the center uh, episodes, but you know we gotta entertain ourselves too. We gotta have fun when we go to work too. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm completely happy to play with some of these genres. I've done uh, um, opera episodes. I've done zombie episodes with brain extractions. I've done episodes where you know just the 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 murder at the beginning is a guy hanging 50 feet in a tree and no, there's no logical explanation for it. You know, all these different things. It, it's, it's fun. It's cool. And it's somewhat surreal. And I think that's an important part of the show too. Well, this may be a strange question, but I'm curious if you could go back and tell yourself in yourself in season one, an important thing about doing the show is there something that you could share with yourself that might change kind of, I guess, not that you're unhappy with where you are, but I'm just curious if, if there is something you've learned that would change something about how you've gone through the show. Yeah, there was some incredible highs and some incredible lows uh, uh, already. You know, we, we were facing down being canceled after season five. We, were, we weren't even done filming and we were told we're going to be canceled, which, you know, boo hoo. It's, it's, uh, it happens all the time. You're already at season five. Why are you crying? <laughs> but it's still, you know, knowing that the ratings were high, there was a huge appetite. You could tell by the scripts that there was no chance of running out of stories for a good while. It was disheartening. It was discouraging. And, and, and I guess if I could go back, I would tell myself to just, just be a bit tougher because, you know, there are some relationship conflicts. There are some, changes of of you know partners uh distribution partners and and just different things that have happened that you know really take the wind out of your sails but then you know there are times when people share letters with you about how this was the thing that connected their family at the end right before they lost you know a patriarch or a matriarch this was a family bonding time for them the, you know something they could all land on and enjoy together and you think wow you know, how far in the people's living rooms we've traveled and, uh, and how far we've come. We, we had kids who grew up from being little, grew up watching the show and end up working on it with us. You know, like, wow. how do you rectify that in your mind? It's been, uh, it's been an incredible thing. So I guess I would tell myself to be a little bit tougher and a little more confident in what we're doing. Because, yeah, you know, there have been times where I've gotten – you know, pretty down on, on myself and, and on just, you know, feeling like, ah, it, you know, it, we're just not getting through here or we're not, you know, it, it seems kind of like we're spinning our wheels because A, B, and C is not, you know, valuing us quite enough. Uh, but then, you know, I get 
I get uh, social media interaction from people in Iran who think we're just wonderful. So who knows, you know? Well, so that kind of leads me to something else here is that usually you guys do a bit of, of stuff in person with fans and everything else. And obviously this year there's, there's not the same opportunity for that. So how has it been receiving, I guess, the fan reaction, you know, all online and what's, what's it been like? Cause I imagine a lot of people are actually watching much more of your show. Well, one of the things that's true about uh, this pandemic is, we've all turned to our screens probably a bit more than we have in the past. And, and it's funny when, you know, when the shit hits the fan, it's interesting who, who's important to you in your life and, and art tends to do that, tends to fill that. And, and so, you know, when we have these conversations about funding arts and, and, and giving arts, you know, a bit of uh, a, a bit of their, their head to, to, you know, be creative and do what they need to do without begging for any, you know, scraps of funding. It, it, it's important to remember what we were all doing when things got rough. Uh, and, and really we started running out of content. You know, there was a scramble for, uh, there was a scramble for, you know, more content and, and, and for production to get back up and running, you know. So it was um, brought to the forefront very, uh, very quickly. I, I think, you know, we, we were able to interact with people in a different way. We took to heart, you know, how many different parts of our industry were completely shut down. For instance, the Toronto Symphony Orchestra was shut down. And these are, you know, this represents hundreds of people who are out of a job and, you know, no foreseeable sort of point going to be having audience and so on. So we put together a special where, you know, with all the protocols in place, we had members of the TSO come in and re, uh, um, recreate some of the music with uh, 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 our brilliant Mr. Carly, our composer from the show, award-winning composer, uh, uh, Rob basically got the orchestra and, and recreated a lot of movie moments, a lot of Murdoch moments, all within our studio. And we put that out for the fans while, you know, helping out uh, uh, um, a part of our industry that is really uh, uh, down on their luck. So um, that's what we did instead. And hopefully we can give that as more content to the fans, but also do something good at the same time. Well, so then... It hoping that there's another season coming uh what do you see if that happens you know how do you how do you then do this again because obviously at least the next year is going to be complicated yeah. <laughs> maybe you can't answer that i don't know <laughs> i i want very much for this show to see its proper and logical uh um full run uh I, I'm, it's funny, I, I've run out of plans, you know, I started this show, I thought, ah, a couple of years, there's no other period shows going on, I'm lucky to have a job, we'll do this for a couple of years, that was plan A, and then three years after that, it was plan B and C had gone by the wayside, and now I'm out of plans, so I don't really know what to expect, I take every day uh, as it comes, uh, season 15, well, that's a nice round number. I would definitely be sad if we didn't get season 15. Beyond that, ooh, well then <laughs> maybe we need to start shooting for 20. I don't know. I'd be happy to do it as long as it goes. You know, it's been a very fulfilling, uh, artistically gratifying uh, venture. And, and the fact that people at home and abroad watch it is very important. You know, I've been working in a vacuum most of my career where, you know, you, you do uh, uh, service work for, you know, say the American industry or international uh, distribution, and you don't really get to know where it ends up or what the reaction is or, or anything really. It just is what it is. But here, this is, you know, people are invested, people are vocal, and um, you feel like you're part of something much more so. Well, thank you so much. It is always a pleasure to chat again. I I can't wait to chat for whatever the next thing is. And uh, and yeah, thank you very much for yet another great season. Oh, thank you, Mr. Powell. It's uh, it's a pleasure talking to you always.